Having already looked at Euler's method, where we can approximate the values of some point uh, near an initial condition, given information about the derivative, and using small horizontal increments of value, what we've called h, uh, to move from x sub 0 uh, to a specific x value where we're looking to approximate. And we use this formula here for Euler's method, y sub n plus 1 equals y sub n plus h times f of x sub n, y sub n. And that formula, remember, is just based on the slope of a tangent line uh, at the initial condition. So our improved Euler method is based on the idea of Euler method, but we look at an additional piece of information that allows us to become more accurate with our approximation. So we think about uh, our initial condition at x0, y0. So I've drawn this point here on the line. And what we'll do with this is actually look at the tangent line. We'll have some slope. And we'll look at following that tangent line over to some nearby x value, which we've called x1 here. So we're looking at where the tangent line takes us at that x coordinate, which gives us some y value. And it is off by a little bit, most likely, from the actual y value, but that's our y value there. And based on the behavior of the derivative, the quality of the derivative, um, our flow here basically will have some sort of slope. So we'll be able to identify the quality of the derivative at that point. And what we will then do is instead of just using this slope of tangent line, this equation for tangent line that we've already generated from the initial condition, we will also use the slope then of the field through our right-hand point here. So this will have some slope as well, some quality from the derivative. So if you can imagine, so I'll go ahead and extend both of these lines. So we have one line running through the right point with this slope. We have some line running through the right end point with this slope. And the idea to make the approximation more accurate, what we will do is we'll actually take the average of these two slopes. So if you can imagine sort of a, a line going through with the average slope, going through that right end point. So we'll call this, we'll say this was slope of the first line. This will be slope 1 here. And then over here we have slope 2 for the second line. And then this line here will have the average slope. Um, and so the way we would do that would be slope 1 plus slope 2 divided by 2. So that's just two, basically two values take the average of that. And that will be our average slope. And so to begin writing out a formula for this, I'll just make some notes here. So this point here, our right endpoint, we're calling x1 comma y1. And another way to write that, if we think about like we did with Euler's method, if we're moving over a value of h, then another way to write this point x1 comma y1 that we'll actually use in the formula would be x sub 0 plus h, right? That's what x1 is. We start at x0, we move over h, and that's x1. So that's the same statement as x1. And then y1, if you think about how we got there using Euler's method, well, it was y0 plus h times f of x0 comma y0. In other words, the value of the derivative at the initial condition, which gave us the original slope 1 that we have in the picture here. So how this works, we look at the average slope now that we got from slopes 1 and 2. So we have this average slope here. And we'll go ahead and take this slope and run it through our initial condition. And that will give us a far better approximation, you can probably tell, of where the actual y1 value should really lie. So you can see if we take that slope and kind of copy it up here through the initial condition, we get much closer to the actual point on the curve there. So the way we'll write this is that our y1 value 
is going to be equal to y sub 0. So we start out the same as the original Euler plus h times, and then I need to find a way to average these two slopes. And so what we're going to actually have is the first slope we said was just f of x0 comma y0. That's the derivative at the initial condition. Plus, and then we'll have to take this information for x1, y1, and we'll have to plug that in and get the slope there. So plus f of x0 plus h comma y0 plus h times f of x0 comma y0. And then if we're averaging those two slopes, we'll have to take all of that and divide by 2. All right, so here we have it just in the general formula. Before, we were just going from x0 to x1, or from y0 to y1. So now this formula here is basically telling us, so the next y value in our approximation is going to equal uh, the current y value. Plus, and remember, h, we want it to be sufficiently small. We want it to be small. But it's our horizontal increment. How much we move over each time we're going to approximate closer and closer to where we want to be in terms of x values. And so basically what we're saying in here, remember, is that this is the average of the left end point and the right end point slopes based on just our tiny little interval from uh, xn to x sub n plus 1. And you'll notice this expression here that tends to be the most complicated for people to understand when we work with the improved Euler method. This is exactly the old formula for the original Euler method. So that makes it sort of an easier way to remember if we can just think of this comp more complicated looking expression in the formula as actually just the original Euler's method formula. In this video, I'm going to actually work out the same exact problem that we did in our basic Euler method video, just so you can kind of compare how the same problem would be worked out using the two different methods. So if you want to kind of look back and forth, you can compare the two and see the difference in the methods. So here we're given that the derivative, so y prime is just x times y, and our initial condition is 1 comma 1, and our h value we're going to use is just 0 0.1, and we want to approximate the y value at x equal to 1.3 using this improved Euler method, and I've copied the general formula at the bottom here. So we'll make some notes. So first, our formula for the derivative is x times y. And our initial condition, so x0 comma y0 is 1 comma 1. Our h, we've already said, is 0 0.1. And we want to find the y value when x is equal to 1.3. So if you think about x0, y0, and we're using h being 0.1, then that means when we move over to the next x value, so x1, comma y1, is going to be 1.1, comma something, right? And we'll use the improved Euler formula to figure out what y1 is when we have x1 being 1.1. So we'll go ahead and write down our formula just in terms of y1 maybe. So y1 here is going to equal y sub 0 plus h times, and so then we'll have x, I'm sorry, f of x0 comma y0 plus, so that's our first slope. Now our second slope will be f of x0 let me go ahead and fix that plus h comma y0 
plus h. And remember, this part is old Euler formula times f of x0 comma y0. Let me close off my parentheses there and my brackets. And all of this will be over 2 because we're averaging those two slopes. So in this example here, then, y1 is going to be equal to 1 for y0 plus h is 0 0.1 times, we'll go ahead and do this, so f of x0, y0, so we would plug 1 and 1 into the derivative formula, so x times y would be 1 times 1, plus, now we're plugging in the following things into the derivative formula, we're plugging in x sub 0 plus h, so x sub 0 plus h is going to be 1 plus 0.1, so 1.1, times y, and this is the formula for y here. So we have the formula for y is y0, which is 1, plus h, so 0 0.1, times, now we're using f of x0, y0, which again is 1 times 1. And then we'll take that and divide everything in there by 2. So you can go ahead and calculate what all that gives. And so that gives us y1 is equal to 1.1105. So that will be our y1 value. Okay, so we've moved over to x1 using 1h value. So we'll go ahead and move over to x2. So x2 is going to be then 1.2 if we move over another h value. And we'll find y2, so y2 will be equal to the previous y value, y1, plus h times f of x1, comma, y1, for slope, plus f of x1 plus h, comma, and then original Euler formula, y1 plus h times f of x1 comma y1, close parentheses, close bracket, all over 2. So we'll go ahead and put in what our values are here. So y2 is going to be equal to y1 is 1.1105 plus h, so 0 0.1 times f of x1, y1, so we put x1 and y1 in the derivative formula, so x times y would be 1.1 times 1.1105 plus, now we'll put x1 plus h into the formula, so that will be 1.2 times y, and the y we get from the old Euler formula, so that will be 1.1105 plus 0 0.1 times 1.1 times 1.1105. All of that divided by 2. When we calculate all this out, then we will get that y2 is equal to 1.2455368. I'm going to use several decimals because we want to see exactly how accurate that is. So now we have y2, and so one more step will lead us to y3. All right, and our final step here is so we're wanting to get to x which is 1.3, so we need to find y3, which is our last step. So we'll go ahead and write the formula y3 is equal to the previous y value, y2, plus h times, you got it memorized yet, maybe? All right, f of x2, comma, y2, first slope, plus f of x2 plus h, comma, original Euler, which would be y2, 2 plus h times f of x2 comma y2. Close parentheses, close bracket, 
all over 2. And then we'll just use our values. We'll go ahead and plug in. This should not be too difficult, I think. We'll have to see if all this fits on one line. I may need more than one line. 1 1.2455. I don't want to round, though, 368, because that'll make me less accurate. Um, plus, and maybe I'll write the rest down here, so that H would be 0 0.1. We're going to have to have a lot of room here. All right, f of x2, y2, so x times y. We plug in x2, which is 1.2, and then y2, which is 1.24555368. And I have to write these pretty close together. All right, plus, and then f of x2 plus h, so x times y there, right? x2 plus h is 1.3 times y. Again, y is our old Euler formula here, so that would be y2, which is 1.24555368 plus h, 0 0.1, times f of x2, y2, which we wrote down earlier, right? 1.2 times, are we going to get it? 1.245 I think we made it, close parentheses, close bracket, divide all of that by 2. When we plug all of that into the calculator, we get y3 is equal, I'm going to do just a little bit of rounding here, y is equal to about 1.4109440 is what I get. So this is our answer we were looking for. So that is y when x is 1.3. And that's, again, that's our approximation, right? So we'll look and see how good we were. So here we've just included in the table um, all of the values we got using uh, x1, x2, and x3 going up by a tenth each time. I've also included a column from our original Euler method from the last video on the website so you can see what we got using that method as well. The original Euler, you notice it's off by about a hundredth and then it's off by uh, you know a little more than two hundredths and then it's off by about five hundredths and you can see the improved Euler stays much much more in line with the actual values. The actual values we just went ahead and uh, our y prime equals xy we were dealing with is actually a separable differential equation so I actually just solved that uh, using integration and then plugged in the actual values to get the the correct exact values. So you notice here the 1.1105 much closer than the Euler. We have 1.221 here. We're a bit closer with the improved to the actual value quite a bit. Um, we're only off by uh, less than one thousandth right there. And then here you can see we start straying a little bit more 1.36 ish compared to 1.41 and here again we're only off by you know about a thousandth as well here. So the improved values are are much much more accurate that tends to be the case. Uh, now these in these Euler and improved Euler methods are are generally okay. Um, I think if you're wanting to be very accurate uh, we would use some sort of a Runge-Kutta method um, the improved Euler is, is okay. Uh, most people, some people would call that a runga kutta order 2, um, generally using a fourth order uh, runga kutta 4 method will be a bit more accurate. And, and again, we won't be using a lot of these whenever we're, we're doing the work by hand uh, in a real life situation. If we're solving in general, what we'll be doing is programming this uh, algorithm basically into a computer uh, and it will be calculating. And, and with that said, obviously, then we can make h very, very small. You know, we can make it much, much smaller than 0.1. Maybe we make h to be, you know, 10 to the minus 6 or something like that, and the computer can, you know, just run that very quickly, and it can get, it, get us to where it needs to be and be very, very accurate, often to within dozens of decimal places. All right, hopefully uh, these videos helped you out on Euler and improved Euler, and good luck uh, approximating by hand. Always a good time.